In prison, you're basically like, I'm next door to hell. When you come home into today's society, people don't want to give you a chance. They want to judge you before they know you. I didn't even think it would be possible to get my kids back or, or to have people to love me anymore or really care about me getting back on my feet. I thought I did everything bad. I thought I did everything wrong. I really thought I was this terrible person that I was going to continue to do these things, but not so. When you start to rethink church and you include your prison ministry, your church will be forever changed because it will be an open door, not just for those who are incarcerated, who were incarcerated behind bars, but for those who were incarcerated in their minds. It impressed upon me the tremendous responsibility it is for people like me who are on the outside, who are free, who have never got in trouble, to be able to make connections with these people and be their family, because for the most part, a lot of them have been abandoned. The only thing that has been found to reduce the recidivism rate is mentoring. One person caring about one person, whether or not they make it or they don't. It's not rocket science. It's harder than that. I was on probation, and I still kept using drugs, and they drug tested me, and I failed my drug test, so then they issued a warrant for me. And I, um, I ended up going to jail. I turned myself in. I, at that point, of course, was at my most broken point that I could have been in. Uh, my kids were fixing to get adopted out. It was, it was horrible. My mom didn't write me. Um, no friends. No, I had no support when I was in there. So when I met Brittany, I saw a girl just like several dozen I had met before. Um, she couldn't look at me in the face. I went to her and I said, I really need your help. I, um, sorry, I don't want to cry. <laughs> I, I told her, I said, you know, I've been beaten down, I've been broken down, and I can't even look anybody in the eye. I couldn't, I held my head down all the time. And she told me that I was beautiful and that I was strong. And at that moment was when we truly, truly bonded. For the first time, she felt hope. That for the first time, she had a support group. It was making all the difference. I didn't really think that um, there were people out there that could really love you unconditionally, want to get deeply involved in your life, not just say these things and just sit in the pews. They really wanted to take action. But having other people who believed in you, it made you believe in yourself. I met Rusty while he was still incarcerated through his family, through his mother. Uh, she would always ask us to lift Rusty up. Made some bad choices getting, uh, getting involved with the wrong people and decided to start selling drugs. I started going back and forth to jail and I finally hit a spot where I did 15 years flat. But I, was, I, I could always sketch. I would often look, look in the newspaper in the obituary section, and I would see little kids that were, had passed away. And I would sketch them and mail them to the family. After I came out of incarceration, that's when I met Pastor Stinson. So I got myself involved in the prison ministry. And I just latched on to him. I began to see where his, his heart was. That kept me grounded. They kept me out of the streets. They kept me wanting to be here. And once I was here, and I was here on a consistent basis, then other church family members started to chime in and see that I was really serious about changing my life. And I think that the more we restore lives, we are restoring families. When you restore families, you restore communities. 
When you restore communities, you restore city, states, and nations, and ultimately, our world. I trust more now. Uh, I feel more now. And I just like to see people smile. When, when, when they look at my work and I can see the glory in the family's face, it's just, you know, that really does, it does good to my heart. I, and, I love, and I love it. Got incarcerated at age 16, got out at 29, um, trying to find my way through life, how I was going to take care of myself, how I was going to fend. You know, basically I was like a brand new baby, but in an adult body. So I had to find a way when there was no way, and the church provided a way. When Christopher started working here, his supervisor brought him around to introduce him to the rest of the employees here. And I took a liking to Chris. And so, you know, you want to do whatever you can to make him feel welcome because he had been incarcerated and because I had had a family member to be incarcerated. So, you know, you kind of know the struggles and the stories that they go through. The church was my first job when I came home. And they built the foundation for the person I am now, who is able to get up every morning and go to work proud, not get in trouble, stay away from the bad things and negative things in life. So they played a major part in the person that I am today. You don't know a person until you talk to them. They can say that they've been incarcerated, been in prison 20 plus years for whatever reason, but you have to get to know the person, not the crime. That's basically what we did here with Chris. Didn't matter why he was in prison, but we got to know the person, and we liked the person that we knew. Well, I think the United Methodist Church, uh, we usually will maybe throw money at a, at a problem, but I think God wants us to throw our heart. You have to love people. You have to love them because God loves them. You have to love them beyond their situation. You have to love them beyond their circumstances. I believe there are those who, have, who will come out of prison and because of their experience will have an opportunity because of what we do in the church to fulfill their God-given potential. And so we, that's what we're on that mission to do. I think it's so important that the United Methodist Church has been known for social justice. And I think John Wesley said it best, that the world is our parish. And I think the world goes beyond the four walls of the church. And I think the United Methodist Church must get beyond the walls and really make a difference to those who are returning citizens. Biggest things that's happening systematically in our in our country right now is uh, what we call ban the box, and that is remove the box where you ask someone if they've ever been uh, convicted or incarcerated, and look at people according to their ability to do a job that's been assigned to them, rather than the past. We're trying to remove the past and work to, towards a new future. For us to have the the, the privilege, the honor, to to partner with Christ to change lives, especially those that society has given up on. What a marvelous, marvelous call that is to, to answer. Mm -hmm.